platform. So good morning everybody out there by this miracle as I repeat every week, every first day of the week, that being the resurrection day, we're celebrating the fact that Jesus was dead for three days from Friday to Sunday, came alive and we're very happy with that idea because it means we can be resurrected too in the future when Christ comes back. So we're now moving to a new book. We finished the book of Acts. We finished with Paul preaching the gospel from the Hebrew Bible. So the question to our audience is, can you do that? Can you preach from morning to evening for three months or two years, preaching the gospel from Zechariah? That's the challenge. If you can't, then we hope that these lessons for the next few weeks will enable you to do that. So we're going to be doing Zechariah, which has to do with remembering. Now, Zachar is a Hebrew for to remember. So he's remembered for some reason. And we'll deal with 14 chapters of that, probably one chapter per week for a few Sundays. Wonderful material, although it's also very devastating because you're going to have the city taken. Half of the city is going to be captured in the prophecy. And one third of the nation of Israel is going to be demolished. So this is grim stuff. But beyond that comes the good news, because all the Bible says is two things. It's very bad now, but you haven't seen anything yet. Wait till the kingdom comes, then it's going to be incredible. Sickness and disease will be a thing of the past, and that's going to be a wonderful world of tomorrow. So if you want to be cheered this Resurrection Sunday, think of the coming kingdom. So with that in mind, I remind you that we always open our services with what's called the Shema. That's the Hebrew word for listen, hear, pay attention, don't miss this. This is the most important commandment of all. And this very week we had a man come to our house who happened to be a bar mitzvah Jew. And he looked at that cushion in our living room and he said, what's that? The Shema. <laughs> it's the Shema. He said, I know what the Shema is. He was a Jew. Do you think Christians know what the Shema is? No, they don't bother with Jesus. You'd think that Christians would bother with Jesus, but they don't. But this Jewish boy was very pleased to see that we had the Shema there. In Hebrew, it goes like this, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. And the word Echad, I want to tell you, means one. You're living in a very confused world where people don't know what numbers mean. They think it's two and two is equal to five or four, whatever you want to make it that women are not really men, that and all of that confusion is massive. But the end of that is coming when Christ returns to establish the kingdom. So with that to Shema in mind, that God is one single person, and there's nobody else besides how many? Him. Nobody else except him. How many people is him? Think about that. Let your children know that him is one person. Let me, if I may then, ask you to bow your head or look up to the sky, to the heavens, whatever your custom is, and we will pray this resurrection morning. We'll pray together. Our Father in heaven, we praise you for the life that we do have, for the degree of health that we're enjoying. In a very troubled world, we can still meet with freedom. There are no policemen beating on our door telling us not to meet or trying to silence us or cause us not to speak the truth as we understand it. We thank you for that marvelous privilege. We ask you to bless us, all seven of us here meeting together. Let us be inspired by the Spirit of God, which comes from these words of Zechariah the prophet, that we can be different when we've heard these words, encouraged and empowered to move on on the race that leads to the life of the age to come in the coming kingdom. We pray that your kingdom would come as Jesus commanded us. Pray that the will of God be done on the earth, that peace be caused to happen throughout the nations which are now savagely trying to kill each other. May that day come soon and may your will be done on the earth as it's currently being done in the heavens. Our prayer is offered week by week, every resurrection morning. Our prayer is offered in the name of the Messiah. Amen. 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 So we have, uh, thanks to the work of one of our members here, a chance to sing. And so we will.
have a shot at Onward Christian Soldiers. If you feel like it, join in at home. I can breathe better if I stand up. Okay. I'll stand up. Stand up. Onward Christian Soldiers. Still able to stand. Do stand. Onward Christian Soldiers. Marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ the Lord, Master, is against the foe. Over to battle, That will work well. Okay, the book of Zechariah is part of the minor prophets. There are 12 of them. We're talking about a time when Darius was uh, king of Persia. And so this is a very wonderful prophecy, as are all of them. And the bad news is there's going to be a disaster in the Middle East when Israel, the current nation, who are far from having accepted the Christ, they haven't, they refused him basically, Jewish people I'm talking about in Israel, they're going to be savagely attacked by the enemies from the king of the north. And the Bible, as I've said often, is such a very economic book, it repeats the same themes over and over again. So once you get the idea what the themes are, you'll read it with intelligence. 
you remember the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, and Belshazzar, the last of the kings of Babylon, destroyed Israel in 536 BC. They had destroyed the nation, the 10 nations before that in um, 721 BC. But in 586, they destroyed the southern kingdom, Judah. They invaded the place. And then there's this famous 70 years that's supposed to happen before Christ returns. The 70 years, which is actually 70 times 7, 490 years, are going to elapse, we're told, before the coming of Jesus in the future. And that will be to introduce the millennial kingdom. Millennium means a thousand years. There's coming a period of a thousand years in which you and Jesus are going to rule. So don't be over humble. Don't uh, underestimate the value of your Christian faith. If you're suffering now many afflictions through much tribulation, we enter the kingdom of God. We gave you last week the eight kingdom texts in Acts, which I hope that you were able to use with all your, of your friends. Jesus was a kingdom of God preacher. And the first stage of that kingdom will be when you and Jesus, I said you, do you get that? You are going to rule the world. Oh, Paul, you mean, I'll just hold the door for a thousand years. No, no, do not. You're underestimating your own talent. You're underestimating the, the difficulties and tribulation we all go through. But you're going to actually fix the world. Let me quote you, Paul. Didn't he say, don't you know the saints are going to what? Manage the world. Do you hear that? Don't you know? Do you know? Are you sure? Are you thanking God for that every day? The saints are going to manage the world. That's tremendous. Paul was incensed, let me add, by anybody who dared to say that we're ruling the world now. He was incensed by that. In 1 Corinthians 4, 8, Paul said, some of you think you're ruling the world now. You must be kidding me. I'm putting that into modern Georgian English. You must be joking. Satan is the ruler of this world now, but the time is coming when you're going to rule the world. So 1 Corinthians 4, 8 would be your, one of your new refrigerator verses. And I want you to be as upset as Paul was by the very false notion now being promoted by many that you're ruling the world now. That's coming in the future. Meanwhile, in Zechariah, you're going to see then the bad news, which is that the people are not doing well. So some of this is rather grim. I, I don't hesitate to tell you that. But the good news is always there. That's going to do your brain good. You see, if you walk around the house this coming week with this glorious idea of the future kingdom, peace on earth, the nations beating their swords into plowshares, their tanks into tractors, and their guns into garden tools, that's actually going to do your brain good. It's going to make you feel better. It's going to benefit your health. So that's why we preach and talk about the good news a lot. Um, and Riley has an introduction to yes. Zechariah. Please. I'll just read a couple of sentences. He says, Zechariah predicted more about Messiah than any other prophet except yes. Isaiah. Yes. Uh, the book is one of consolation and hope, beginning with a call to repentance and concluding with prophecies concerning the return and reign of Christ. Excellent comment. Very, very good. So that's Zechariah, which means to do with remembrance, a Hebrew word meaning to remember. It means Yahweh remembers. Yahweh remembers. Yes. To... Fine. That's fine. <laughs> Good stuff. God has not forgotten any of us. His plan is still marching on. Wait around. And so let's read around the room. I'll start with verse 1. I'll <laughs> call us to 2. And we'll read down to verse 6 and see if we can come up with some comments on that. So verse 1 goes like this, in the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the prophet, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edo, saying, verse 2, The Lord was very angry with your ancestors. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, declares the Lord of hosts, that I may return to you, says the Lord of hosts. Do not be like your ancestors who would not listen when the earlier prophets said to them, this is what the Lord Almighty says, turn from your evil ways and stop all your evil practices. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? 
But did not my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, overtake your fathers? Then they repented and said, As the Lord of hosts purposed to do to us in accordance with our ways and our deeds, so he has dealt with us. Not a marvelous opening. I wonder if as you were reading that or hearing it read, <laughs> did you immediately think of what gospel did you immediately think of? Mark. Mark. Mm -hmm. so that makes my point that the themes are repeated over and over again the bible is a simple book it's been made into a chaos by the traditions but this is exactly mark one verse one i only discovered mark one one the other day or recently i've known about mark 1 14 and 15 for years but mark one one guess what that says the beginning of the gospel that's where you start <coughs> we've all been taught you know all of our lives to begin at the beginning why not? So this is reminiscent of Mark chapter 1, which, which is a command, by the way. Jesus said, repent. That's a command. Change your mind, think differently, and believe. That's a command. Believe the kingdom of God. You have no option. So what have we done? We say, I prefer going to heaven when I die. The Bible has nothing whatsoever to say about going to heaven. One of my uh, relatives, actually, well, known J.C. Robinson said, heaven in the Bible is nowhere the destination of the dying. So you have a large job on your hands to try to gently correct people and say, let's read the book. As though Jesus really did say, blessed are the meek, they're going to inherit the land or the earth. Carlos put up a very charming piece on online the other day by Wendy Johnson, where she celebrated her late father who said her father had taught her to pray, number one, her father had taught her to always believe in the coming kingdom. It's very sweet. If you've got 10 minutes free sometime, Wendy Johnson online talking about how well her father had taught her about kingdoms. Very, very touching. I was moved when I went and saw it. <clears throat> okay, the Lord is very angry with your fathers. What? God was mad, would we say? In the South now. God was very angry. Why? Because they would not listen. So the story of the human race, we can faithfully say, is God speaks and nobody listens. So we're, our job then as Christians is to make sure we are listening. So when we study the Bible, we pray, oh God, help me to hear what it is this book is saying. Maybe I have a personality fault that's bothering other people. Help me to correct that. Let me not be causing your anger. So return to me. That word is repent, isn't it? Return, come back. And if there's something I need to be hearing about myself as a correction, let me hear it. What's often missed yes, in that word yes. is change your mind. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Change like, your mind. Well, what we hear a lot of mm. is uh, you repent of sins, yeah. addictions in your life. Yes, that you know, too. Uh, lifestyle. Yeah. But it's also a change of mind, oh, absolutely. which entails mm -hmm. that dreaded word, Anthony, doctrine. <laughs> People say, give me love. Don't talk about doctrine. It's too intellectual. Wait a minute. You cannot repent and believe the kingdom if you don't know what the kingdom is. So our first job is to explain the kingdom is firstly, primarily, mainly that future thing. That's why Jesus in the Lord's Prayer. Jesus was very much consumed with the idea of the kingdom, as we should be when you see the suffering, which is torturous now. When you watch Ukraine and see the destruction, so we are to change our minds based on the coming kingdom. Come back to me, verse 3, it says, declares the Lord, all caps, L-O-R-D, stands for Yahweh. That's God's personal name. You don't have to make any fuss about that. You can say God. You can say the Lord God. You can say Yahweh. You can say Jehovah if you want to. That's fine. Don't ever get all bent out of shape about the pronunciation of the divine name because they don't do that in the New Testament scriptures. scriptures. Your fathers, where are they? In verse 5, or I'll read verse 4 again. Do not be like your fathers, to whom the former prophets, those would be the earlier prophets, these are the 12 minor prophets we're looking at. So the major prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel, constantly said, repent, return, from your evil ways and from your evil deeds. But they didn't listen. Isn't that awful? They didn't listen. So we should always be praying to God as 
Greg Dibel, a famous prayer in Greg Dibel's book. He said, oh God, if I'm deceived, please send some kind person along to undeceive me. That's well put. And yeah. And the prophet mm. is not listened to. No, the prophet so, is not listened to, right? So the prophet is the spokesperson. Absolutely. Speaks the, for God. Uh, the mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. uh, I read somewhere where the uh, one commentator said the mouthpiece of God was yeah. the prophet. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're going to hear a voice from heaven, you're not no, going to no. see a vision. But the prophet is as good as it should be as good as God Himself. But Absolutely, that's understand. why we're reading this. This is why we're exposing right. ourselves to the prophet here. <laughs> yeah. And so we're listening to God by listening to the prophet. I get it. The prophets do they live forever? No. And you're not going to live forever if you don't listen to God. Verse six: Did not my words, God's words, and my statutes, which I commanded? So these were commands. My, which I commanded my servants, the prophets. So the prophets are God's servants. I like that. Isn't that beautiful? I thought the other day, it's amazing. It's 3,000 years since these words were written. Amazing. And we're pouring over it 3,000 years later. This yeah, verse, verse 6, and just quickly, yeah. the Net Bible, which uh, yeah, you like. use uh, often oh, times. Yes. On verse 6, mm -hmm. uh, they translate the latter half of verse six. Yes. Then they paid attention yes. and confessed. And so they, uh, there's a footnote on the word uh, attention mm. in the net Bible. Mm -hmm. And it says they turned. Good. They repented. They turned around. They repented. They changed their mind. They so listened. it's interesting how they use this other word attention. Oh, yes. As a repentance word. It's like Bible. the Shema, doesn't it? Pay attention. Israel generally did not pay attention to the Shema and Christians in their tradition have allowed the Shema to be swamped. So you could this week write to the Billy Graham Association very kindly say, wait a minute, what is the Shema? Is that a Unitarian or Trinitarian creed? That's the issue. I've been engaging them in conversation and, and they appear to be a little bit interested. I haven't followed up as I should, but we can all approach somebody online and say, what about the Shema? Is that a Unitarian or a Trinitarian creed? Which is it? Why well, is it a Unitarian creed? Well, why aren't we following it? It sounds to me as though we're not obeying Jesus, and that is very, very dangerous. Also, I think this is very anti-Calvinist. Yes. Because the Calvinist God is like a stone, unmovable, yes. unchangeable. He doesn't react to work with human beings. But verse 3 especially, turn to me, so that I can turn to you. God <laughs> works with us. He reacts to what Absolutely. we do and not do. <laughs> it's wonderful. Very much anti-Calvin. Calvin is a murderous figure. If you're a Calvinist, I would be trembling. Calvin is the one who murdered Servetus on the issue of the Trinity. He murdered him. He said, I'm not letting this murderous Servetus get out of the town unless I kill him. Calvin is also the one who said, in response to the question in Acts 1 6, is this the time now finally for the kingdom? Can you hear the excitement there? These are like, wow, is the kingdom coming now? And Calvin says, there are more errors in that question than there are words. <laughs> Wait a minute. Calvin did not understand the gospel. So if your friends are going to a Calvinist church, ask the pastor to talk about that. Are you sure you want to follow Calvin? I wouldn't want to do that. So, yeah. um, in verse uh, 3, where he says, you know, return to me yes. that I may return to you. Mm -hmm. So yes. if you flip over to Ezekiel 43, verse 7, yeah, okay. that's, I mean, you don't have to turn it, but I'll yes. just tell you what it says. Yes. That is where God finally, in the kingdom, this like millennial temple yeah. in the kingdom, mm -hmm. God says that this is the place that my throne's going to be in the soles of my feet where I will dwell among the sons of Israel forever. Yes. And the house of Israel will not again defile my holy name. Marvelous. Neither they nor their kings uh, or their corpses by their harlotry and their corpses. So basically, he's saying finally, and yeah. in verse nine, he says, "And I will dwell with them forever. They're no more. They're, they're finally going to turn to him. Finally, in the kingdom. We got to wait till you know the Messiah comes back. That's that right. Happen, unfortunately. Yes, unfortunately, but that's what we're praying. So we're praying, may your kingdom come. It fascinates me that Jesus. The word kingdom is mentioned twice in the Lord's Prayer. It's the only word that comes really twice. The kingdom, may your kingdom come. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. 
and then first peter says that the power and the glory and honor coming to you that's hiding in your translations very often translations are nervous about saying that we human beings are any good they're all on this spell of calvin who thinks that every human being is a rotten messed up thing forever no no god has got a lot planned for us that's the point there all right, the patrol of the earth is the heading. I'm reading from the New American Standard Version, updated version. If you buy one, always buy it with the marginal references because they are a good form of commentary. Let me start with seven and ask Carlos to go with eight. On the 24th day of the 11th month, now very precise in the dating, the month of Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord Yahweh came to Zechariah the prophet, the son of Berechiah, son of Ido, rather repetitive, same information as we had in verse one exactly, as follows, here it is. I saw at night and behold, a man was riding on a red horse. He was standing among the myrtle trees, mm. which were in the ravine with red sorrel and white horses behind him. Yes. Then I said, my Lord, what are these? And the angel who was speaking with me said to me, I will show you what these are. Mm -hmm. So the man standing among the myrtle trees explained, they are the ones the Lord has sent out to patrol the earth. So they answered the angel of the Lord, who was standing among the myrtle trees and said, we have patrolled the earth and behold, <coughs> all the earth is peaceful and quiet. Okay, let's pause there a moment. So this is the good news. You're right. Really? Uh, yeah. What well, part of the earth did they Yes, yeah. obviously. <laughs> that is a vision of something that wasn't true today. Exactly. It's not quite at all. Of course, you're thinking of the book of Revelation, are you not? Do you know the book of Revelation cites Zechariah massively? So the book of Revelation, 22 chapters of it, cites the book of Zechariah very, very often. The New Testament is only an extension of the Old. People don't realize that. We talk about the Old Testament. We talk about the Hebrew Bible, which is three quarters of our Bible. The gospel is in the Hebrew Bible. That's why we, we read last week that Paul, for three months, was talking about the kingdom of God using the only Bible he had. He didn't have the New Testament. That's wonderfully interesting to me. So I was using the commentary in preparation for today by Joyce Baldwin. She was the head of a, of a, a ladies' Bible college and a very distinguished person. It doesn't occur to this good lady, and I should write, I think she may not be living, I'm not sure. Hasn't it occurred to you, this is the gospel you're reading here. It's the gospel of the kingdom. She doesn't mention the word gospel anywhere. So there's a lot to be done. What else we have here? Uh, this, these horses are not very good with colors, so you can help me with colors here. That would be a, a sort of sorrel color, would be dappled, I, I gather. It would be a, a, mix, a mixed color for horses there. Doesn't matter. Mm, reddish brown. Reddish brown, thank you, reddish yeah, brown. Yeah. As opposed to a red horse that's right. orange anyway. and red. I mean, what, Most important for me is verse <laughs> 9. Then I said, <laughs> verse 9, please note, my lord. Little L, listen, you and I'm talking to all of you who can change the world. If you get online and say, wait a minute, there are two words for Lord in the Bible. One is the Lord God, capital L, Yahweh. And there's another one without a capital L, which is Adoni. People say, well, too academic. No, it's not academic. It's like telling you the difference between a man and a woman. That's not difficult. It's becoming difficult in our world. I understand that. That is actually the 191st Adonis. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> the mark. Sarah so has almost been listening. the end of the Adonis. <laughs> right. You can talk about Adonis. Your Jewish friends understand that. We didn't get onto this with, with the young Jewish boy who came. We, I should have mentioned. He knows. I could have asked him, what's the difference between Adonis and Adonai? If you don't know that, you haven't got off the ground yet. Adonis <laughs> occurs 195 times in the Bible. It always means somebody who isn't God. Psalm 110 one is going to change the world. People will hang, hang their heads in shame one day and say, my goodness, we were stupid. We weren't listening. We were not listening. So Adoni says, got it there. 191st occurrence of Adoni. In Zechariah, you so, find my Lord several times. One, two, three, four times addressing an angel. My Lord, the angel. 
No, right. I'm talking to God. So this man is is an is an angel. Yes, obviously. An angel that looks well, like a man. Well, it's him on yes. a horse, but then he was a bunch with a bunch of horses. A yes. bunch of guys on horses. Yes. Standing among all these trees. A bunch this of angels. The, this on is the horses. vision. Yeah, and the they angel. They look like men, but they were obviously angels. That's so right. Verse nine. Angels. You're exactly yeah. right. So that would be a little interesting. Verse nine. Around. Then I said, "My Lord, what are these?" <laughs> You get that question in the book of Revelations. Who are these 144,000? It's, it's almost copied. The book of Revelation is copying this stuff. Here, you ask a question. I said, my Lord, who are these? Good question. The angel who was speaking with me said, I'll show you what these are. Then he talks about these various horses and they're patrolling and they're finding that the earth is quiet. Well, that's not true today. <laughs> So it would be a vision of a future time when it's peaceful, not true today, certainly. Just uh, yeah. Well, back then, at that time, isn't that what they're saying? There wasn't any really major wars. Major going wars, on right? At well, the time. Major yeah, Priory has right a said. different meaning yeah. to it. Okay. Uh, God's patrols report that the earth is peaceful and quiet, i.e., the heathen nations still flourished and were self-confidently secure, yes. while Israel was downtrodden. Okay. That sounds right. Yes, that sounds about yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a so, false peace, really. It's a false peace. I mean, peace. the, the yeah. evil nations are at peace. Yeah, That's they're at peace great. because they have all the bad, the, what they consider the bad guys, God's people, yeah. uh, in captivity. That's yeah. right. So, it yeah. looks good, yeah. but it's, it's a very tenuous peace. Just to, yeah. just to quickly go back on the word of the Lord. Yes. In verse 7. Yes. The NASB. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord came to Zechariah. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, so most translations have the word of the Lord came. One of the interesting things about the word, mm -hmm. so we emphasize the fact that in the New Testament, the word of the Lord or the word or God's word yes. is uh, a reference to code language, to the gospel about the kingdom. Yeah. But in the Old Testament, it's different. Mm -hmm. The distinguishing mark of the word of the Lord in the Old Testament mm -hmm. is simply this. Yes. A message yes. that God gives to his spokesperson or mouthpiece. Yes. So it's interesting how that changed. Mm -hmm. The so because something so uh, fundamental mm -hmm. like this usually doesn't change. You no, know? It, it, but it, no, that's right. It it, does it, mean that. it, it's a big shift because yeah. you know that's all Jesus and the apostles know. They know this language. You yeah. know, it's uh, second nature to them, or first nature. Well, yes, that's right. So when they hear the word of the Lord, if I'm a Jew in, in during the time of Jesus, I'm mm. thinking, oh, okay, we have a message from God. Yes. But no, it becomes now specifically yes. in the New Testament. Where uh, the king, which is yeah. the message from God. So it works rather well because mm -hmm. they all know it is God speaking. Right. So let's use that to describe the word of the kingdom, Matthew 13, 19, Matthew 13, 19. <laughs> The word of the kingdom. Most people pick up the Bible and say, got the word of God here. It's not wrong, but it's not very accurate. You've got the words and the word of God within the Bible. The Bible knows the Bible as the scriptures. The scriptures. But within the scriptures, you've got the important word from God, which is the gospel of the kingdom. Right. So within okay. the prophetic message yes. that was known as the word of the yes. Lord, of Yahweh, Yes. now we have this focus on Exactly. The kingdom which is, that is coming, which in the Old Testament is known as the day of the Lord. Totally. So, so it is the important prophecy and message. So when we talk about may your kingdom come, that's the, the only thing I think God's heart is breaking over the misery <coughs> he sees here. When you see, he must, don't you watch, I, I watch on the news these destructive pictures in Ukraine. All those beautiful houses, somebody built those, you know. And you've got this tragic wreckage, you know, just absolutely senseless. That's going to come to an end. How about, that, to do how about that Indian tragedy? Mm. Oh, yeah. The theft went up to over 300. Mm. And I don't know if you saw Train the, crash. the film mm -hmm. of that. Yes. You know, when, when derailments happen, but mm. this isn't a mess. Train crash, yeah. right? Yes. Oh, Train this. derailment that led to yes. crash in yes. hundreds. And the one in, what was it, Palestine oh. was the equal. <laughs> yeah. The, world is full of trade death is going to be ended we all appreciate i mean death is a horrible idea to me when you get to be just about 88 you wonder about death you know it becomes a little bit more real but the solution is resurrection when the dead are dead they're asleep 
Do your friends know that? What are you doing to help them? They should understand that when you're dead, you're not alive. That's rather easy. So then verse 12, in the angel of the Lord, who is addressed as Adoni, O Lord of hosts, how long? That's a, a favorite Bible question, by the way. How long will you have no compassion for Jerusalem and the cities of Judah? With, you, with which you've been so angry and indignant these 70 years, 70 years, verse 13. You want to read a bit more, Carlos, for that, 13? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, we let Linwood read. I'm sure he might oh, read. Oh, where is it? We keep exactly. stopping before Linwood gets to That's not read. fair. Yeah. Uh, Thank just you a, for correcting that injustice. <laughs> just a quick uh, mess. Uh, <laughs> point about the angel of the Lord in verse yeah. 12. Yeah. So as we know, we're also battling the the idea that this is Jesus in a pre-human form. Yes, yes. Uh, but here's an interesting comment yet again from the Net Bible. Mm -hmm. So as, as you read there, it says, the angel of the Lord then asked, mm -hmm. Lord, who rules over all? Mm -hmm. So you have the angel here, mm -hmm. it says, is clearly distinct from the Lord yes. who rules over all. Yes. So mm. this notion that th there are two things here that are so bad. <laughs> mm. The notion that this figure, angel of the Lord, is a pre-human so-called Jesus. Yes. And that the angel of the Lord is literally God himself. Yes. So there are two, two errors, there. errors yes. that we we encounter daily and I debate as you know mm. so I have to battle two very yeah. to me nonsensical ideas yes that an angel can be human or be pre-human quote unquote and that the angel literally is God himself so basically yeah. God is his own messenger somehow in some mysterious so called way it's not that difficult Sorry, just, so you ask your friends can you be older than yourself the way to put that question to your friends can you be older than yourself can you be older than your own grandfather of course not. The Bible says that Jesus is not an angel. Whatever yes. he is, he never ever was an angel. So the whole yeah. of the Jehovah's Witness movement, people at your door, need to stand corrected on that issue. And many of them do eventually see that. Can you answer a question before we move yeah, on? Please. Nancy, <coughs> Nancy, she says, I heard the Lord of hosts means God of the angels. Is that true? No, God of the armies. No, not of the angels. Well, yes, in a sense, but God of the armies of heaven. He's the general. Armies of heaven. Yes, the armies of heaven. Which El Shaddai. Would be which would be. They would be certainly. angels, but would not be. the cherubic baby, you know, floating around with. <laughs> no. Little, no. God of the armies of heaven. Yeah, no. what, what, what arrows? Yes. Real angels that look like men every time they appear. When they appear, they <laughs> look yes. like men. So that's El and yes. our that's armies. That's a, yeah. that's armies. a fighting force. Fighting the force. Net Bible translates yes. that Lord of hosts every time as Lord of heaven armies. Yes, which would be which angels. Is more You're descriptive. Right. Yeah. Yes, Lord right. of hosts, we don't really know what that yeah. means. Also, <laughs> think, yeah, also what's. Like Yes. Also, what's interesting, and it goes against the notion that the angel of the Lord yes. is not only all those things I said, but it's always the same angel. Mm -hmm. That's wrong. Yes. Because, well, uh, yeah. uh, I won't go into the, the details and uh, the grammar, but I'll just give you one interesting thing about, about it. In Genesis 28 and 32, for the sake mm -hmm. of the recording, mm -hmm. and in Psalm 103, you have the phrase in Hebrew, angels of God. Yes. Angels of God in plural. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean that when it, you read angel of the Lord or you see in your Bible, and it doesn't mean it's always the one. No. The same one. Being, it could be a different yes. angel. You know, right. It could be any angel yes. because angels of God are angels of God. So yes. they're, yeah. It's people so, of God. That's absolutely very, very important. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, 13. Where are we? 13? <laughs> Linwood, you are in Thank you. The Lord answered the angel who was speaking with, mm -hmm. with me with, with glorious words and gracious words. Gracious words and comforting words. Yes. 14 says, So the angel who was speaking with me said to me, Proclaim. 
saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am exceedingly jealous for Jerusalem and Zion. But I'm very angry with the nations who are at ease. For while I was only a little angry, they furthered the disaster. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I will return to Jerusalem with compassion. My house will be built in it, declares the Lord of hosts, and a measuring line will be stretched over Jerusalem. Say this also. This is what the Lord Almighty says. The towns of Israel will again overflow with prosperity, and the Lord will again comfort Zion and choose Jerusalem as his own. Okay, let's pause there. There's the good news of the gospel. I like the 14th verse. I don't like it, but it's very telling. Thus says the Lord of us, I'm exceedingly jealous. So God was very angry. Now he's very jealous. It's comforting, isn't it? He's very jealous of his people, <coughs> and that's us, the Israel of God, the international Israel of God. And he's very jealous about his own people, physical, ethnic Israel. And 70 years comes in because we know at the end of 490 years, 70 times 7, everything is going to be good. I'm always looking at the end of the story and how things are going to turn out finally. And he's very angry with the nations because as the story develops, you're going to find that a confederation of 10 kings, I'm now thinking of the time of the second coming, there will be 10 kings who are going to attack Israel, 10 kings. And they're from the Middle Eastern area. The king of the north is their chief. And they're going to have a final invasion of Israel. Why? Because Israel is totally asleep, right? The only thing that will wake these people up is a shattering invasion from foreigners. That will happen in the form of 10 kings with a beast, a single leader, political leader in charge. And they're going to get very angry with Israel. But that's in the news today, isn't it? You've heard of Iran, the threat of Iran, how the Jews in Israel are being threatened by foreigners. So all those things are quite possible. Mm -hmm. What we don't have in the Middle East right now is a temple, but I think we have to have a temple. The reason for saying that is that Paul says that the man of sin and the abomination of desolation, that's another name for this final beast power, will sit in the temple of God. So let me tell you, you are a temple, you are. You're not the temple of God. Subtle difference, but you are a temple of God. You are a place where God dwells if you're a Christian. But there's going to be the temple of God, most likely a building. So watch the news. If you can report anything that you read or hear about that, it's fascinating. People are watching that carefully. This would tell us then we're very close to the end of the age once that temple is rebuilt. Okay. The next, the next that was yeah. about them physically in captivity back then. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. And he's saying he's not, he's trying to teach them a lesson. He was angry yeah. with them. And then yes. he is going to have compassion on them. And yes. But this is all from back then. Well, it's, I mean, it's back then. I think it, yeah, then. I'm, I'm hearing the New Testament version of it as well, reading both into it, really. Right. Well, you can I picture. Mean, I will return yeah. to Jerusalem with compassion. That certainly was true eventually yeah. in Old Testament times, but it's even great, more greatly true in the, in the future. My house, my temple will be built in Jerusalem, declares the Lord of us. That's going to happen, I think, before the second coming and then rebuilding when Christ comes back. And their measuring line, that's what uh, uh, architectural language, will be stretched over Jerusalem. So this, so this imagery and this event, yeah. um, for example, you got the 70 years in verse 12. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so this was a mm -hmm. prediction of the Babylonian exile. Yes, certainly. Mm -hmm. So so then that, that numbering is used for a yet it future. Is. It's multiplied. Event. So that's how prophecy works. It, oftentimes. Yes, absolutely. Some present things happening that are fulfilled. Exactly. But also, as, yes. as you put it, telescope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Daniel, it becomes future. 70 times 7. Right. right. You've got 70 years. There was 70 right. years. In history, absolutely, when the Babylonian captivity came to an end, they returned, they built the temple. Haggai and Zechariah, right, are the two prophets. Haggai is a contemporary. Zechariah, and they're rebuilding the temple. But those of us who read the New Testament are clearly seeing, all right, this reminds me of what's going to happen. 
So it's highly relevant to us as well. I, I'm always struck when I read the prophets. Mm. Um, uh, this might sound weird, but how human God is. Yes, exactly. Um, again, the Net Bible on verse 14, I am very much moved. Yes. I was a little displeased yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, the humanity of God. Yes. Yes. As in his emotions. Yes. What he says, he changes his mind yes. many times. You know, sometimes he, he'll say, that's it. I'm sending the angel of destruction. And then something happened. Okay, stop. Yeah. So that that God, which is true, I mean, it's inescapable. Read yes. any prophet and you'll see this. Oh, yeah. That's why I cannot understand Allah. The the Islamic view yes. of God is the it's opposite static. of what I just said. We, we read in the right, he is distant, so distant that obviously he cannot be human. Yeah. So that's why they reject uh, Trinitarian yeah. Christianity. But it's also a very uh, what's the word you just used, Anthony? Uh, sto uh, stoic, what was the word? Unmovable, Unmovable God. Unmovable God, yes. It's, hey. it's a God that he's so holy, I, we cannot, he's so, he's so far from us. <laughs> yes. And his messengers too. That's why they get mad, yeah. Muslims, when you portray their so-called prophet, yeah. Muhammad. You cannot show his face, right? They get so mad, they, they right. kill people, some of them. Yeah. But it is such a distant thing. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. It's very Calvinist. Yes. It's yeah. very static God. Because also the idea of predestination in Islam. Yeah. It, fate is everything. Your fate is determined. That's right. There is nothing you can do to change, to change your fate horrible. in Islam or Calvinism. Yes. So if we're made in the image of God, he's like us. I like that. He's like us. He thinks as we do. And uses language that we understand so in verse 14 i god am exceedingly jealous exceedingly jealous how mm. jealous is that very he's very jealous. very upset by anybody who's going to attack some of his people that's comforting for us isn't it yeah in verse 15 my version has i was i'm very angry yes now. i was a little angry so well, you know smooth. he has levels he yes. has moved and, and that's <laughs> reacting to human beings God, 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 is, yeah. God is moody I don't mean to yes, no, no, I'm, no, no. I'm very angry with the nations who are at ease <coughs> yes. right right so moody God. weren't we talking about that being like the surrounding nations yes, yes the okay. ones who the are at peace and, who were all at yeah, peace yeah. Exactly. I was very angry with them mm -hmm. yes for a while I was only a little angry they <laughs> furthered the disaster right yes. so meaning yes. The they, they got worse, and so he got more angry yes. because he yeah. interacts in, yes. with us. I'm just yes. wondering what the, I mean. Yeah. The disaster wouldn't be him, them taking them into captivity. Um, the disaster? Are they talking about? Um, just they're just. Well, Ravi says those are human heathen nations were used of God to punish Israel. Yes, they went right. too far mm -hmm. in trying to annihilate her. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, because yeah, God like always uses sort of, other nations to punish. Yeah, right. yeah, I mean, but then they take it yeah. too far. Yeah, because the the, the, the yeah. angel of the Lord says, "How long will you have no compassion on Jerusalem?" Yes, you know, and then the other angel is answering for the Lord, who's yeah. speaking. So this is a little confusing. Who else? Yeah, sometimes I'm trying to pronounce But he says, difficult. "Well, God was saying, you know, I, I, I'm jealous for Jerusalem. I love Jerusalem. I yes. want them to be my people." Yes. So it's all I'm, about not just, I'm not just ignoring them in captivity. Yeah. I'm teaching them a lesson yeah. while Absolutely. in captivity. So and Jerusalem will, is everything. I will come back to them. It's like London is very important for British people, right? Jerusalem is everything. Zion is the other name, Zion. You can go to Jerusalem today. Do you find Jesus sitting on the throne of David? No. The kingdom hasn't come. It's that easy. He's not there. Zion is something to be rejoiced about in the future. And this word compassion, I love that in 16, I will return to Jerusalem. Doesn't remind you of Isaiah? Comfort ye, comfort ye my people. Everybody knows that. I know this word so well because I was taught as a child to go to and hear the Messiah sung in London every year. We went as a kind of uh, annual ritual to hear not only the Bach Matthew Passion, 
I know those lines so well because I heard them sung. Have compassion on Israel. That's a marvelous, exciting relief, isn't it? Again, that's going to do you good to believe it. The whole idea mm. of comfort is anti-Calvinist. Yes, of course. Because, <laughs> the, because God would have predestined yeah. that, that horror to be upon oh, them. Calvin so is why a then would he come? Mm. Calvin is a real menace. My house will be built in it, declares the Lord. It's all about mm -hmm. the temple being built again. Mm -hmm. So when I'm hearing 70 years, I'm immediately thinking of 70 times 7 years, right? I'm, because I'm reading both parts of the Bible and meshing it all together. Proclaim in verse 17, thus says the Lord of hosts, look at this, my cities will again overflow with prosperity and the Lord will again comfort Zion. That's Isaiah Isaiah 40. Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. And, yeah. sorry to stop you. Yeah, go ahead. Who is the comforter? Who the, is the, well, the Holy, yes, the comfort is the Holy Spirit in the and, New Testament and too. And who turns out to be that? And that tends, tends the answer is always, always Jesus. <laughs> First John two one, he's the Paracletos, yes. the Mashiach, by the way, Anthony. Yes. Uh, what's that? Menachem. As a comforter. Menachem the Mashiach is, a comforter. is also known as the Menachem, yes, which, which is, is a comforter. Hebrew it's exactly word that. It's and, the same as Paracletos. And that explains why Jesus is identified as the. Yes. Right. another word for Holy Spirit yes. in the New Testament. So that's interesting. If you just glance over to chapter 8, because this is one of the most vivid pictures of that future Jerusalem, to do your brain good for the week. This, the week Are you jumping ahead? I'm jumping to 8. Oh. The word, eight. Yes, Zechariah 8. Look at this. I'm exceedingly jealous for Zion. Repetition, right? I'm exceedingly jealous for Zion 8. One, with great wrath, I'm jealous for her. There it is. Same themes. Talk about repetition. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem will be called the city of truth. This is to do your brain good for the coming week, right? City of truth, the mountain of the Lord of the hosts, reminiscent of Isaiah chapter 2, we call the holy mountain. Look at this. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women will again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each man with his staff in his hand because of age, and the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls playing in the streets. Do we need a whole lot of experts to explain that? Of course not. It's a beautiful picture. If it is too difficult in the sight of the remnants of his people in those days, will it also be too difficult in my sight? Of course not declares the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I'm going to save my people, here you have it, from the land of the east and from the land of the west. That's the glorious gospel. <coughs> what disappointed me about Joyce Baldwin is she didn't bother telling us that this is all about the gospel. I'd like to write to her, this is the gospel. So what's it all about for her? Well, it, it, does, it does very good work historically. It, it reports so all history. historically. Well, yeah. much of it's history, it. yes, but it, it is also about the future. She does mention the future, doesn't call it the gospel. Oh, I see. Come right. on, Joyce, it's the gospel right. you're describing here. Anyway, uh, you want to finish the back, let's finish the chapter, that would be good, and then we'll hand it over to you for additional stuff. 18? Who's 18. 18. Who's going to read 18? Once again. I yeah. think it was my turn. Good, thank you, Michelle. Okay. Your turn, 18. So, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, there were four horns. Mm -hmm. So I said to the angel who was speaking with me, what are these? Mm, question, yes. And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four crests. Yes. And I said, what are these coming to do? He said, these four craftsmen are the horns which have scattered Judah so that no man lifts up his head. But these craftsmen have come to terrify them, to throw down the, the horns of the nations who have lifted up their horns against the land of Judah in order to scatter it. All right, it's not difficult. A horn in the Bible, I'm not into archery at all, but I'm looking on the walls here. Those horns are the symbol of power, are they not? Horns. Is it that kind of horn or a horn that you blow? 
Uh, no, the, like I think these would be horns. Is it not like a chauffeur? Oh. It is an animal horn? Yeah, been animal, animal horn. Horn in yes. English can be yes, it completely can. different things. Yes, it is. It's, yeah, no, it's that's not true. What is it in Hebrew? It's the word for Keren is the word for It says like here the fact that there are four horns yeah. shows a correspondence to the four horses yes. of verse 8. That too. Which mm -hmm. got to four parts of the world. The trolling. Yeah. That is the whole world. Yes. What was the horns at the altar? The horns of the altar were on the side of the of the, of the altar. They are also a symbol of power. Horn, as you look at that animal. Okay, a shofar that's is right. made out of an animal, right? Well, that's true I mean, too. It is, a, it is the a, same thing. It, it is can, an animal. It can be. It can be a shofar. It, it, it is blown. Yes. So, yes. It is. It can, so both can be made. It's not both like they're lifting true. up a horn and beating people. No, that's they're right. Probably blowing it to that's scatter right. or whatever they're doing. Yes. There. Obviously, it is a military <coughs> symbol of power, and it can be turned into yeah, a musical sorry. instrument. You're absolutely right. And then there's some discussion of the two olive trees, which appear to correspond to the two witnesses in Revelation 11, if you're thinking of the future. I answered the second time and said to him, what are the two olive branches, which are beside the two? We haven't, I, we haven't got there, have we? No, I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm on the wrong page. Two? No, no, I'm chapter two. All right. The horns oh, which have right. scattered you the there. Yeah. yeah. So not the, the horns. Not the horns, no. There are four horns here in chapter one, which we should be concentrating on. These are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. So they're enemy horns. They're enemies of Israel in the past, in 536 BC, in the future, before the second coming. What are they coming to do? The craftsmen. Well, they have the answer and response then to the evil horns which are attacking. They've lifted up their horns against the land of Judah in order to scatter it. So that those are the bad horns, and the craftsmen are going to repair it apparently. It's 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 very cleverly written, this because it really makes you think, doesn't it? You're trying to figure out who's who's who in the story. That takes us to the end of chapter one. We'll get through this. 14 chapters of Zechariah in 14 weeks, if we do a chapter per week. And Carlos has something to add yeah. to what we're doing. Yeah, actually, you because uh, interesting hand in hand with Revelation. So yes. only two readers okay. for this exercise. <laughs> okay. And I will choose the readers. You choose readers. <laughs> Michelle and? and Sarah, okay. if you don't mind everyone okay. else. So I'll need to read it. Uh, can you go, Michelle, to Daniel 7? So we'll read from Daniel 7, and Sarah will read from Revelation 20. Mm -hmm. And I have some PowerPoints for the audience watching at home. So I call this the Millennial Rain Timeline. Yes. So first, a brief, what I would call a brief disclaimer. So we're going to talk about mainly the book of Revelation, and this goes well with Zechariah, so prophecy. And the book of Revelation, also known as the Apocalypse of John, yes, which is Apocalypse. I prefer Apocalypse of John. I don't know why we don't call it Apocalypse from the Greek, meaning an unveiling, yes. a revealing of, of the things. second coming book. Right. Revelation. Revelation Sorry? of mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. But it Christ. means revelation. Oh, yes. right, right, right. same word. Mm -hmm. Apocalypse. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're using the English word instead <laughs> yeah. of right. And Greek. the one thing I want to emphasize is that <clears throat> these are the last words and teachings of Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now it's important for us to stress this at the outset whenever we do this book because many in our Trinitarian, or oh, sorry, non-Trinitarian community seem to reduce the teachings of Jesus, the words of Jesus, to the gospel. Yes. For example, recently someone shared something that was said by a pastor in our community. <laughs> this person said, I hesitate to place as essential doctrine something that Christ did not clearly confirm in his own teaching. That's a quote from a pastor who I will not name because I don't know who it is actually. 
uh, that is that just disturbs me. Yeah. Because that tells me that this so-called pastor does not even know his Bible. I think by essential doctrine, without knowing this person, I think what they mean by essential doctrine is the future establishment of the kingdom of God on earth, yes. which is the focus not only of our ministry, Restoration Fellowship, yes. our website focus on the kingdom, but of the books we're reading yes. to certain extents, extent Zechariah and the books we're about to read mm -hmm. or the chapter that mm -hmm. Daniel 7 and mm -hmm. Revelation. Mm -hmm. So in other words, again, the last words of Jesus are about the ultimate Christian hope. Anthony earlier yes. was talking about our hope of the resurrection. We're yes. all, we are all going to die. We had deaths here in this yes. small group recently of two great people. Yes. So this is what I call the Christian endgame. This mm -hmm. is what it's all about. So to say that, you know, Revelation, the apocalypse, well, they're not really the words, the teachings of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think mm -hmm. you better check yourself before you wreck the, yourself, as the young mm -hmm. people say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you say we're all going to die, that's to say we might, some of us will survive till the second coming. So we, right. we're not so all bound people. to die even if we live till the second coming. Okay. So getting into this topic. So one of the things you will notice, or I notice mm. uh, about uh, Revelation specific to chapter 20. So we're going to read sections of chapter 20 with Daniel 7 mm -hmm. is because Jesus in the revelation given he gives to John through his angels, by the way. Yeah. Uh, the revelation is interesting. It's about Jesus, his angel, and of course, John, the, the prophet, the seer. Yes. Yes. Also mentions God. Revelation 1 1. Oh, Can we God. read that? Can yes. I read that? Like right now? Sure. Revelation 1 1. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. The revelation <laughs> of Jesus Christ, yes. which God gave him mm -hmm. to show to his bondservants. Yes. The things must which must soon take place. Mm -hmm. And he sent and communicated it by his angel to his bondservant, John. Okay? So it's God gave this yes. message to Jesus, yes. who gave it to the angel to tell it to John, John. to write it down for us. Did I cover everybody? Yes, okay. you did. Chain. Good, good <laughs> point. I think we just got to start there. Yes, right. Most people Absolutely. haven't read Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. No, that's exactly okay. right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. So Jesus not only echoes, but expands on the prophecies of Daniel mm -hmm. in this book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. So, so let's see. So we'll, we'll do this. So we'll re read, like I say, some what I call parallelisms between specific to Revelation 20, which is, as we understand it, about the future, about our resurrection that John calls the first resurrection and all the events. Uh, that happened during what John calls the millennium in this chapter. And we'll see echoes of it mm -hmm. in Daniel chapter 7. Mm -hmm. So if, uh, let's see, so you're in Daniel 7. Mm -hmm. Can you please read verse 21? So Daniel 7, 21. So we're looking at parallelisms here. And how many verses? Just the one. Thanks. Is I kept I kept looking and that horn was waging war with the saints and overpowering them. And Sarah, can you read verses four to six in chapter twenty Revelation? Mm -hmm. Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were those who had been given authority to rule. And I saw those persons who had been beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus and because of the gospel word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received the mark on their forehead or hand. They came to life and began to reign as kings with the Messiah for a thousand mm -hmm. years. So those verses 
are parallel to many other verses in or vision of, of Daniel chapter seven. So that was just verse four. Did you want? Oh, did you go to six? No, that was just first four. Oh, verse wow. Four is very <laughs> yeah. All right, no, actually, <laughs> just, just hold it yeah, there then. So here we immediately see, or I see a parallel here. We see the saints are martyred. So Christians at mm -hmm. that time, which we believe this is future, at that time, just before the parousia, the, the second coming, mm -hmm. as it's called, mm -hmm. some Christians, not, not all of us, if we're still alive, some will be martyred. And then we have uh, Daniel 7, 13, please, Michelle. 7, 13? Yep, just right stay on 7. Uh, I, <coughs> I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, one like a son of man was coming, and he came up to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. Right. And then, obviously, in Revelation 20, verse 1, Sarah. Mm-hmm. Then I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, holding in his hand the key of the abyss and a huge chain. Right. So these are events that I understand anyway, mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. of us understand, yes. as the second coming, yes. the parousia. And then if Sarah can read the rest of Revelation 20, verses 5 and 6, please. 5 and 6. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were finished. That this is the first resurrection <laughs> blessed and holy is the one who has a part in the first resurrection over them the second death has no power but they will be priests of god and of the messiah and they will reign with him for one thousand years okay and uh michelle can you read verses 9 and 14 of daniel 7 please i kept looking until thrones were set up and the ancient of days took his seat his vesture was like white snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was ablaze with flames. Its wheels were a burning fire. Mm -hmm. And to him was given dominion, glory, and a kid. Wait a minute. Is that what you said, Mary? Uh, 9 and 14. Verses okay, 9 well, that and was, 14. Ancient of Days is God the Father. Yes. Down here, 14 is Jesus. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And to him was given a dominion, glory, and a kingdom that all the peoples, nations, and men of every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away, and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. And Sarah, verse 3 and 4, or just 3 and the first part of 4. Please. Okay. The angel then threw him into the abyss, that's the devil, shut it and sealed it so that he could not deceive the nations any longer until the thousand years were finished. After that, he must be freed for a short time. Mm -hmm. Then I saw thrones and seated on them were those who had been given authority to rule. All right. So so what we're seeing here is, again, the parousia, and then thrones are set up mm -hmm. for the saints, as Daniel calls them, or as Christians, to rule the nations. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll get to uh, Daniel 7, 11, please, and 26. Verse. Then I kept looking because of the sound of the boastful words, which the horn, which I say is the Antichrist, was mm -hmm. speaking. I kept looking until the beast was slain and its body was destroyed and given to the burning fire. What did you say, 27? 26, please. 26. But the court will sit for judgment and his dominion will be taken away, annihilated and destroyed forever. Right. So after a time... So we're, we're seeing here the parallelisms. So after a time of incarceration, let's put it, being bound, Satan is eventually destroyed. And we have the destruction of the beast. So Satan portrayed as a dragon, right, as a beast. And then Sarah, Revelation 20, 10, please. Mm -hmm. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown earlier. They will suffer an, an anguished destruction lasting day and night to the ages of the ages. Now let's see the result of all this. The result of this, all these visions, all these events, as horrible as they sound. Uh, Michelle 18, 22 and 27. Daniel 7, 18, 22. 
But the saints of the highest one will receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, for all ages to come. What, what 22? Person? Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one. And the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. And 20. Then seven or seven? 27. Yeah. 27. If you're done with that. Yeah. Then the sovereignty, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven, meaning on, on earth, will yes. be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominions will serve and obey him. Right, and as Anthony has stressed, it, the translations here vary. Some translations have, and they will obey them. Yeah. That is the saints, but we know that the Son of God, uh, the sorry, yes, the Son of Man, who is the Son of God in Daniel 7, embodies, represents, or is yes. represented by the <laughs> saints of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. They will obey him, the Son of Man. They will obey us, yes. the, the saints. So uh, there's a variance there. And then finally, uh, Revelation 20, verses 9 and 10, please. Again, I think you, you read 9. 9, no, and, 9 10. and 10. Yep. Mm -hmm. They went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. But fire came down from heaven and completely devoured them. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet, prophet had been thrown earlier. Mm -hmm. They will suffer an anguished destruction lasting day and night to the ages of the ages. Right. So that's the end of the matter. Yes. As, as it's yes. put by the prophet. Now... These events in specifically Revelation 20, are they past? Are they present? Are they future? <laughs> now, I asked the question because obviously many Christians think all these things have happened. Some think mm -hmm. this is somehow spiritually now happening. For example, the, the saints are ruling. Christ is ruling the nations. I even read this morning. Christ is ruling the nations with a rod of fire now, Carlos, I was told this morning. Mm. So, really? yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then oh, we yeah. have, obviously, a prediction of future. Now, I'll just point here to a few things that tell us that this is this has not happened, it's not happening, but will happen. Yes. So I have some more verses for you, uh, Michelle, if you don't mind. Uh, let's see, Daniel 7. Yep, still in Daniel 7, 28, please. Okay. At this point, the revelation ended. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts were greatly alarming me, and my face grew pale, but I kept the matter to myself. Right, so he keeps the matter to himself. It didn't happen during his lifetime, it sounds like. <laughs> uh, it's yet to happen. In the next chapter, Daniel 8, 17. So he came, wait a minute, 17? So he came to near where I was standing, and when he came, I was frightened and fell on my face. But he said to me, son of man, understand <coughs> that the vision pertains to the time of the end. Mm -hmm. And then 1014, please. Let's hear that. Uh, now I have come to give you an understanding of what will happen to your people in the latter days. For the vision pertains to the days yet future. And Daniel 12, 13, please. But as for you, go your way to the end, and you will enter into rest mm. and rise again for your allotted portion at the end of the age. Right. So the latter days, the end, those days. Uh, Resurrection. I mean, that, yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that. Don't that worry. Not happened yet. I won't miss that one. <laughs> So we have the end, the time of the end, the latter days, those days to the end, to the, the end of the age. Yeah. So I think uh, you have to make up your, your mind, obviously, your, your own mind, but obviously we don't think this has happened yet. So now let's get to the resurrection. Mm. So we also see how both visions, Daniel 7 specific to Revelation 20, result in a literal resurrection. Now, why do I call it literal? Because, for example, Daniel 12, verse 2, uh, mm -hmm. of those who sleep in the dust of the ground. So that sounds literal to me. 
And then the resurrection begins with us, the saints. So which resurrection was Daniel speaking of here? Well, in Revelation 20, we have further information. We have the information explicit to two resurrections. So the first resurrection that Sarah read from in, in uh, what was it, uh, verse 4, verses mm -hmm. 4 to 6. So you have phrases like, the saints came to life, or the beheaded, I should say. Yes. You have John saying, this is the first resurrection <laughs> twice mm. in, in the latter part, well, in verse 5 and the, in the latter part of verse 6. Blessed is holy is the one who takes part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them. Mm -hmm. So from all these things, I think we can build this, what I call millennial reign timeline of these two very important chapters. By the way, Daniel 7 has uh, the most quoted or alluded to verse in the New Testament. Do you know? We've talked about this before. Daniel 7, 13. That is, I made a count. Uh, you know, you can make your own count. But it, according to my count, it's 40 plus times mm -hmm. that that verse is alluded to or quoted by the New Testament writers. And the following one, Daniel 7, 14, is a close second, I think, 20 plus times. So th those are very important uh, verses for the New Testament writers. So we have a timeline here. We have something that sounds like this or looks like this for our viewers. Christians are martyred before the second coming, beheaded to be specific, with an ax. Christians raised from the dead at the second coming. And this is called the first resurrection twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> twice. Mm -hmm. This is followed by the court. Uh, Tracy did a, uh, by mm -hmm. the way, Tracy uh, at, from KOG Missions, what was her? Uh, the court will convene. The court yes. Will convene. Please check it out. Uh, I'll, I'll try if I have more hands here mm -hmm. to put a link. But Tracy did a great talk called The Court Will Convene. Mm -hmm. Finally, right, Anthony? Mm -hmm. You will be vindicated. Mm -hmm. You will be able mm -hmm. to say, <laughs> I told you so. I was right. I'm not a kook. <laughs> well, I'm actually, not a heretic. <laughs> Yeah, let's let's be humble about it a little bit. Jesus will say, Anthony, yeah. you were right. How, how about that? I don't want to sound yeah. too <laughs> gloating. But but it's yeah, gloat to gloat is a negative word, I understand. But that's vindication. Yes. We will be vindicated yes. in front of our enemies. Yes. Our enemies will be raised, all of them, if not. Uh, if if we won't see the live ones at the second coming, you'll see the dead ones when the rest of the dead mm -hmm. are raised from the dead, mm -hmm. as Revelation 20 says. Mm -hmm. That's why they're raised from the dead. That's why the Hitlers of this present evil age will be raised. Mm -hmm. That's why the Calvins mm -hmm. of this present evil be age. raised and made alive. Right. Before they're put to death yes. eternally. Yes. Right. So we can face them possibly so they can face us because oh, yeah. it is our vindication and it is their judgment uh, yes. because they're unrepentant wicked people um so we have this the court will convene to what to do nothing to just convene an empty court mm -hmm. without anyone no to rule and rule who the nations with christ this added information of 1,000 years to be specific, mm -hmm. which appears, Anthony, six times, mm -hmm. the phrase 1,000 years in mm -hmm. Revelation mm -hmm. 20, mm -hmm. I yeah, believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, six, I think. Six, six times, mm -hmm. folks. Mm -hmm. You got twice the first resurrection, six times a 1,000 year period. And the only reason you're emphasizing is that because there are some people that we know of yes. that should know better yes. that are saying, it's not really a thousand years. Yes. It well, just means it's a long time or something like that. Right. Well, it's a whole system. And, I mean, I just found out mm -hmm. that most Christians hold to what's known as a amil view, a no millennial view. So they do not uh, take this uh, for what it says, Revelation 20. So it's, it's not, you know, I'm not picking up, but 
I, I was amazed. Most mm. Christians are taught this or believe this. So again, but I'm just Christians think they're going to be raptured before any of this happens. So they don't care what all this end right. time stuff is. I've heard some somebody told me that outright. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be raptured away yeah. before all that pre, all happens. So I don't even read it. I don't even care what it says. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's a shame. That is a shame. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm going to use the word Christians with, yeah. you know, Quote, quotes. Quotes. Yeah. Uh, air quotes air for quotes. the audience. Yeah. Yeah. But they are premillennial, those <laughs> people, but they're also pre tribulation yes. rapture. So they're not the majority you, that you're lost talking me at about. Meal. <laughs> anyway, uh, just to end the, the, the matter here for the side, uh, what else will happen in this millennial reign timeline? Christians will destroy Satan, that great evil, the old serpent, the beastly dragon, and the dead of the, uh, the rest of the dead, as I said, are raised at the 1,000 years. And guess what? And that's it. That's the ball game, as is, we say here in America. Mm -hmm. in, in in Britain, it would be that's that's the test match. <laughs> that's it. We yeah, inherit the kingdom. Yes. Forever. Yes. Uh, and and those well, other. When you say that's it, that, that sounds sort of negative. No, it, it's the end of <laughs> Satan and the end of evil and the end of death, but the beginning of yeah. the rest of eternity with god here with yes. all of us in a spiritual right. it, it's not just it with a small it no, it's, it's huge, fabulous right. the it's, good news beyond it's it, really right. it's it's the real it's, it's yes the real it's yep. amazing it's paradise it's yep you know, so yep. just for that the beginning and not the end is the beginning rick revelations 21 yep. and 22 so yeah do, do you want to well I, uh, one more statistic is this uh, 30 allusions in the book of revelation to daniel 7. you see this shows you what jesus was interested in. you want to be like jesus you better be interested in the book of daniel you better be interested in the book of revelation because his mind is massively on that 30 different references do you know how many in revelation 20 from revelation 20 yeah to to daniel to Daniel, um, I can, uh, I can well, find well, it. Probably a lot. Yeah, a lot. But it, Jesus is massively interested in the book of Daniel. Yeah. Disproportionately interested in the book of Daniel because he's fascinated by the kingdom. He lives and breathes the kingdom of God. So if you want your pastor to sound like Jesus, you invite him to always speak of the kingdom. Always speak of the kingdom all the time. Then you sound like Jesus. If you don't, Yes, I'm like Jesus. Okay. I triggered someone on the chat. Okay. Somebody Maybe. disagrees with us big time, but I want to, <laughs> okay. I want you to address one thing if they're still listening. Yeah. And that is they're saying that we are dispensationalists by, huh. by teaching this to people. How dare we teach this insulting notion to people? That's what this person said. And I was going to answer it, Carlos, but you blocked them, but that's okay. Yeah, well, we, are, we are. We are. We are dispensationalists in one sense and not another. It depends We're, what you mean. If, yes. if yeah, by well, dispensation, some of these people on online who okay. read this will know what we're talking about. If by dispensationalism you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, we're not. If by dispensationalism you mean there's a future for Israel, then we are. So it's a, it's a subtlety. But if you really think, I would like to ask this person: if you think you are ruling the world now? You haven't read first corinthians 4 verse 8 where paul says some of you think that you're ruling now you must be kidding me paul said would to god that we were ruling the world so we could all be ruling together if that doesn't convince you nothing i think will yeah, yeah. we do have a, a, a relevant question yeah. yes good the rest of the dead mm. the rest of the dead yes. who go through this judging and they survive say they were a tiny baby when they died and they know nothing they yes. didn't really commit sin right right so so they will survive they yes. want to know will they be immortal too well they will they will be raised in the second resurrection right? right and they will be judged according to what they reasonably could know we believe in the wider hope mm -hmm. we tell the audience which a baby obviously cannot be held responsible for not understanding the kingdom right so According will to they what be you, mortals or will they be made immortal? They, they will be made immortal if they're judged 
perhaps they will live out a life then as well to show what they're made of and then they will be judged according to that yeah be, beyond the the so-called yeah. great white throne judgment yes beyond that is, yeah. is a bit you know we don't know fuzzy we don't i mean know. revelation chapters 21 22 are notoriously uh argued about yeah yes. but i think the focus today with yes. me yes. is revelation 20. yes so cool. if we can get at least that down mm -hmm. if we if we can uh i know this is an interesting question for people it is. who are not us <laughs> yes right. who, who have family members that they dearly love who were wonderful Absolutely. people mm -hmm. they want to know are they going to be because yes. they've heard this is a resurrection onto judgment and death yes right you know, and we, for some bad people it is but for people who were good wonderful people well, we maybe don't know. They didn't that's know. why they're judged they that's all right we don't know they're judged according to their, to their works right. revelation yeah. 20 right. read the end of revelation right. 20. we just don't know i cannot tell you if your baby your grandfather who was catholic or whatever we don't know and and today i don't know so people want to corner us with but we oh, do know god is merciful yes we do and that yes. he yes. has some plan in absolutely place whether they will be suddenly become immortals like us or whether yes. they have to uh will have a time of living a trial life, and testing maybe that's with, quite possible without I, satan involved yes mm -hmm. so that it would be a nice life you know yes. they have a chance but i know, like we don't i know. like to put it It'd the be way nice to know that mm -hmm. we don't know i like the book I like to put it the way Abraham put it. Mm. Will not the God of all the earth <laughs> judge rightly? Yes. Mm -hmm. That is his business. Of Our business is at least to come to some kind of consensus of one mind, one spirit, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and get others convinced into well, what we com believe is. Comforting true. text for your question <clears throat> today is if their names are not found in the book of life, this second resurrection, if, then they're put in the lake of fire. If they're not, found in the book of life how do they get in the book of life by living out a good life maybe the comforting text in all of this is romans 2 where paul said there are people who don't have any knowledge of the bible at all who do good things mm. some good things mm. that's in their favor everybody's judged by their works every human being is judged by their works all this stuff about faith and works is completely a waste of time you can only be judged by what you do there's no other mm. standard so if they a lot of, there are a lot of good people, especially in America, I think, they are have all of that in their favor. So God will deal with them according to what they reasonably could know mm -hmm. in the second resurrection. And if their names then go into the book of life, however that works exactly, then they'll be saved. That's wonderful. And we don't know saved in what capacity, but at least we know we can have that comfort. Absolutely. More or if you have a child that oh, died absolutely. or your spouse who was not oh, a absolutely. christian but a pretty good person yes you know we we just i'm not saying we have to understand every bit of it no. but we have to be able to explain to people who want to know exactly their, like you said their, their comfort level comfort level of right. understanding right. if we're going to seek yes. truth and understanding in the whole bible right. let's not leave that little thing out famous you know? verses in john 15 twice jesus said if i hadn't come and told you you wouldn't be guilty you know that if they had never heard of any of this because they weren't born in the west or whatever then they will not be you can't be held guilty for what you reason if you don't know there's a 30 mile an hour speed limit you don't know it you could probably be held guilty if you see the sign 80 on the side you say well officer i thought that means i can go 80 miles an hour you'd probably be held responsible you should know better right you should know that 80 was the name of the road it wasn't the speed limit so you're responsible for that but the baby cannot be held responsible for not knowing the truth so god will have to deal with them on that basis that's very comforting it's called the wider hope and we believe in the wider hope at our site we go into that in detail yeah some people were taught that at the second resurrection everyone yes. who is raised which is everyone yes. in the world yes is then thrown into the lake of fire yeah and we wrong. do that's know fine. for sure that that's wrong <laughs> so we can say that that clearly yeah, absolutely, and that absolutely, absolutely, yes. 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 because it says if Therefore, their names right. were not in the book of life it yes. wouldn't say that if yeah. they were all if they were all into the lake right. of fire yes right. Right. uh before we leave i haven't read comments in a while right and they sort of stacked up <laughs> so let let me read some because yeah. a lot of people watch our stuff and i like to also <laughs> acknowledge them Yes, of course. Um, a comment on, so this is mostly from our YouTube comments yeah. on Dr. Nemesh's 
excellent presentation at the Good. conference. Very much. Sure. Stephen, uh, very clear and helpful. Thank you, someone mm -hmm. said. Good. Uh, on my presentation at the conference, thanks from us in rainy England. <laughs> when is it not rainy? <laughs> Uh, on the video called The High Priest Lawmaker, yeah. that's ab absolutely deep. Okay. <laughs> on what did Jesus mean by eat my flesh, uh, we explained John 6 yes. coming yes. down from heaven. Yes. Uh, as a former Roman Catholic who left the many fatal and false teachings of Roman Catholicism over 40, 40 years ago, mm -hmm. Glory to God. I stumbled upon this channel yes. several times and finally decided to listen. <laughs> this is hands down the best explanation of this blasphemous false teaching called transubstantiation. Yes. Mm -hmm. That means that Praise. the bread is literally the body right. of Jesus. Praise, Praise God for okay. his word and truth. Thank you Good. so much. Well, we encouraged by that. Thank them um, profusely for that. One more on my debate with the rabbi. Yeah. I debated a yeah. rabbi Arroyo. Uh, thanks for posting this on YouTube. Thank you, Tracy. She was the moderator. Carlos and the mm -hmm. rabbi. Good. I enjoyed the debate. My thinking is if Greek philosophy infiltrated Christianity, it is reasonable to bear in mind that it could have infiltrated Judaism as yes. well. Sure. Good uh, point. The rabbi yeah. argued a lot from uh, what was it, Targums and mm. other oh, Jewish the, uh, Kabbalah, the mysticism, Kabbalah, mysticism yeah. of Judaism, yeah. right? So called two powers in heaven. And, yeah. All right. Good. Thank you. Very good. I'm going to close it up. Uh, yeah, well, that takes us to the end of Zechariah 1. Don't forget, it's all bad now. God is angry with sinners. <laughs> he does care about doctrine, by the way. We may not. We may say, well, you know, arguing about the millennium. But, well, wait a minute. Supposing God makes the rules and you don't. God can be furious with people who will not believe the simple truth. So watch out. I assume he's jealous for his truth. And we're trying to get to the truth and we want to be corrected even our private <coughs> lives need to be corrected some of us talk too much some of us don't say enough all right let's work on that thing i work on saying more <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to leave the room in the very beginning so you might have covered this but i have in my just yes, the beginning here that chapters one through eight yeah. are eight visions about their yeah. present situation that's right and about the future. Did you yes no, we'll, we'll no, do no, more no. of that another week exactly there are right. eight visions it's very systematic eight yeah, good, visions good we did the first vision i think today didn't we helps thank you Vanessa. Right. absolutely and then the yeah. rest chapters 9 to 14 are visions of the future or Prophecies yes. of the future. Yes. Prophecies. Fourteen yeah. beautiful <laughs> chapters. You're going to love it. <laughs> okay. Should we close with prayer today? Yeah. Father in heaven, we thank you for this animated group of people here who are zealous for your word and the words of the prophets. We ask that our brains will be eased and comforted by the great news coming when the tanks are beaten into tractors. And when the guns become garden implements, what a day that will be. We pray that you'd comfort all those who are bereaved by death, that you'd comfort them with the hope of the resurrection. We thank you for the peace and enjoyment of freedom from being silenced that we are currently enjoying here in Georgia. Bless everybody listening and bring us together again on another Resurrection Sunday. Till then, we ask for your peace to surround us and your comfort to uphold us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.